Resuming debate, reprise du débat, the Honorable Member for Courtney Alberni. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It, it's a huge honour to rise today in the House of Commons and, and uh, with this bill and with the support of my honourable colleagues, Canada is on the cusp of making history and ending uh, cetaceans in captivity and, and making sure it's a thing of the past. Not only is this important to me, but it's important to the people of my riding, to people right across this country from coast to coast to coast. Countless environmental stewards who have fought hard on this issue and certainly to the new Chalmuth people and Indigenous people uh, across this country. I've heard from many of them and I, and I think of the new Chalmuth people first, Mr. Speaker. Many of them see uh, the orca as uh, they call it in their language, the Kakwin, as a spirit animal and as an animal that is, uh, is a reflection of their ancestors. And to think of their ancestors uh, being held in captivity is certainly something that they don't want to see happen again, Mr. Speaker, and uh, we passed this bill. It does a couple of things. First, it gives us credibility and legitimacy to take it even further, to push for a global ban on having cetaceans held in captivity. We, we, we know that cetaceans in captivity suffer in a way that is not justifiable. S203 is, is a reasonable, balanced piece of legislation. So let's look at the life of a, a captive whale, dolphin, or porpoise. In captivity, conditions are Spartan and prison-like. Cetaceans suffer confinement, isolation, health problems, reduced lifespans, high infant mortality rates, sensory deprivation, and trauma from transfer to other parks and calf separations. Given the evidence, captive facilities cannot provide for their social or biological needs. They need to roam widely and dive deep in order to thrive. A captive orca's range is only one ten thousandth of one percent the size of its natural home range. Eighty percent of their time is spent at the service looking for food and attention from their trainers who make the choices for them when they're held in captivity. So captive-born animals are often forcibly weaned and shipped away from their mothers and their only companions and they've, that they've, you know, they've ever known when they're shipped to these facilities. And it creates unnecessary trauma. Uh, it's cruel, Mr. Speaker. And now, that compared to a wild cetacean, they spend approximately 80 to 90 percent of their time under the water. They have the freedom to make their own choices, sometimes traveling up to 100 miles per day, following food and the members of their family. Many of these species, like orcas, live in complex societies with their own cultures and dialects, maintaining close ties with family and friends. Some remain in family groups for life. For wild orcas, their pod is critical to their survival. And I just want to also, you know, uh, I'm excited, Mr. Speaker. We just had a baby orca in, uh, in the pod, just uh, witnessed off to Fino by my good friends Jennifer, Stephen, and, and John Ford. Just another reminder of the importance of our orcas uh, being able to roam freely in the wild and knowing that a cetacean, a baby orca, uh, won't get taken and put into captivity is, is really important. It's a relief to all of us. So we know that keeping cetaceans is cruel, given the scientific evidence about their nature and behaviour. They're intelligent, social and acoustically sensitive marine animals. New Democrats believe in the power of research, and we know that the continued study of cetaceans can be done ethically in the wild. There, scientists can actually get a realistic view of their natural behaviours without causing a lifetime of pain and suffering. Our party also understands the need for legislation to be measured, and S203 does balance a fair transition for the two remaining facilities that hold captive cetaceans. It grandfathers in existing animals and gives the zoo and aquarium community a long phase-out period. It's not asking these facilities to close overnight. But certainly, Mr. Speaker, we won't be supporting the movement of cetaceans and uh, sale of cetaceans anywhere uh, from those facilities. Um, there are a few people today that we need to thank. And first of all, we need to thank the hundreds of thousands of Canadians that brought their voice uh, to uh, all elected officials, whether it be in the House of Commons and the Senate, calling for this legislation to be passed. The environmental groups and animal rights organizations for mobilizing people, Indigenous communities for raising their concerns who've led to the, the bill and, and today's debate. Um, 
Also, Mr. Speaker, there's people that we need to thank in this House for coming together and, and showing that this isn't a partisan issue. It's a moral issue, Mr. Speaker. And first, I want to thank my colleague from Skeena, Buckley Valley, because, Mr. Speaker, he, he had a very important bill, a piece of legislation to end zero waste packaging, which we hope the government will uh, 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 move forward with. We know that they made some announcements today in response to my motion M151 uh, around plastics and, and phasing out single-use plastics. I'd like to congratulate the government on that first step. Look forward to hearing more momentum and movement, especially around industrial-use plastics and, of course, rethinking how we use plastics. Um, but I want to thank my, my colleague from Skeena Buckley Valley because he traded the, uh, uh, his bill that was going to be read uh, instead today uh, to move forward with this piece of legislation, knowing that it was the only way that we could save this piece of legislation was to have it heard here. And uh, I want to also thank Terrace's Ben Corving because he's the one who uh, helped bring this bill forward to uh, my colleague from uh, Skeena Bulkley Valley around zero waste packaging and, and is uh, a contest that he held in his riding to look at important legislation that, uh, to ensure that Canadians' voices were heard in this House. I want to thank Ben because we haven't lost sight of Ben's work. We've ensured that the government has heard the proposal that Ben brought forward. So I, I, I just want to thank Ben and thank the member from Skeena Bulkley Valley. In that same spirit, I want to thank my colleague and friend from Saanich Gulf Islands for the considerable work she, she has uh, done on this issue and the stewardship she's shown by taking on this bill, working with us so we could find a pathway forward, showing that non-spirit, uh, non-partisan approach when it comes to ensuring we do the right thing for cetaceans that don't have a voice, Mr. Speaker. We are their voice, and this is an opportunity to demonstrate what we're going to do here to look out for them. I I want to thank my colleague and friend from Port Moody, Coquitlam, who was the previous uh, vice chair of the Standing Committee on uh, Fisheries and Oceans, uh, who helped move this through committee, worked very hard on this uh, bill. And, and of course, uh, my friend and colleague, who's the chair of uh, the Fisheries and Oceans Committee from Avalon, uh, my friend who has done some great work to help ensure the passage of this bill. And I want to thank him, and I really mean that because without his uh, help and, and working all of us in this house together, we wouldn't have got this done. And I commend him for his work on that. Thank you. Um, this wouldn't have made it this far, Mr. Speaker, without the courageous and bold efforts of Senator Wilfred Moore. And, and I think uh, you know that uh, sometimes uh, we, we raise our concerns about the Senate, and I certainly have my doubts right now, Mr. Speaker, on a number of pieces of legislation. So I'll take it away from the Senate and I'll give it to a human being that I think is a huge champion, and that's uh, retired Senator Wilfred Moore, because he's been a champion of this bill. He tabled this bill in this House, uh, in, his, in, his, uh, in the Senate, and, uh, and he stayed on this bill even beyond his retirement. De it's showing his dedication and commitment. We owe him a round of applause. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and uh, I, I just, again, I want to thank him for being completely committed and devoted to this, seeing this through. And, of course, uh, Senator Murray Sinclair for taking on this uh, bill from the Senate and championing it and bringing that really important wealth of Indigenous knowledge and his, uh, his uh, opportunity to have connections across this country and share those and ensure that those voices were being heard as well in the Senate. So, again, in closing, uh, Mr. Speaker, I hope that we'll see uh, passage of this bill very quickly. Um, and I want to thank, again, the hundreds of thousands of Canadians who've been the voice for those uh, cetaceans that don't have a voice. And I look forward to Canada having legitimacy and credibility on the international stage when it comes to fighting for cetaceans, ending captivity of whales internationally. And I hope that is the next step for our country. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah. Well done.